The chateau, also set in greenery, situated near the village of Massa, where several Jewish families had taken refuge. It has a magnificent gate and one acre of grassland. Its owner, Monsieur Rozonski, made his fortune selling frying pans before the First World War. A short while after his death, the chateau passed into the hands of a rich owner, an English lord who fitted it out for his girlfriend, a former village resident who was a dancer called La Bardette at a cabriolet in Rue de Lap in Paris. The good life lasted 10 years. After the Lord died, the lady of the manor mortgaged the property. Everything was sold, right down to the leather door handles turned out of the chateau. The old lady lived ruined with her goat, her daughter in an isolated outbuilding in the warden's home. When the OSC rented the chateau, only the bricks and mortar remained. The description on arrival was apocalyptic. At the chateau, all the windows were lit up. However, there were no window panes or doors, no toilets either, nor a stove in the kitchen. Only one water tap is functional, and that is outside. However, two months after, there had been a total transformation, at least according to the reports. The first home we visited in Chaumont, everything was bright, clean and brand new. The walls had just been painted. This home, on the other hand, had not been lived in for 20 years. That changes the perspective a little bit. And you know, it's like a bit of a blow because I was hoping to find some things here from like, from the day that it was built, the original feel of the place, but it's looking less and less likely if everything was sold down to door handles, toilets, the chance of discovering something in the kitchen which was original or a stove or something, that dream's kind of been popped. But then there's this other underlying thing of the story of this place and how it keeps getting left to ruin and to degrade and over the years people keep trying to bring it back and give it its purpose again you know and that's what happened in the war they brought this place back to be this safe haven for the children and for the chateau to provide everything they needed and they did that and I guess that's what we're all trying to do now when we're renovating this again is give it back some sort of purpose, like a purpose that it deserves.
snake's gonna kill me dumping all that there. He's only just cleared it. Anyway, got a good, good clear up. Gonna blow this out with my trusty petrol hoover. And then, well, and then we're ready to do it all again, but on the floor above. And one thing, you know, there's these little things like getting this story and hearing, you know, the history, but there's some things that just give you that little boost. And one of the followers on Instagram sent me this picture. Now that's of one of the ruined rooms. He took a screen grab and recreated the room as it, what it's gonna be like, you know. And just seeing that just was like, yeah, that's what I'm doing it for. I'd work it out. I think that's probably the safest, most professional thing so far this project. <sighs> Can't keep this up. So now the winch, controlled by this little doodah, can pick things up all the way from the ground floor and then have them arrive kind of here. So I've yet to see if that's really going to work, but it takes like 200 kilos, so in terms of getting beams up here, getting the scaffolding up here. That should work. I'm quite impressed with that. So, listen, I know you're all eager to see these photos of the interior, and I was going to wait. Obviously, I've shown the patrons them already, but I was going to wait until I get some proper copies. But look, if you're desperate, let's have a look at them now. If you can hear a humming behind you, it's just the bee's nest under the bathroom floor, which is just one other problem to sort out. But, the photos. So, the photos of before the Seattle burnt down. So there's one here, and it's the guy who brought me the photos. It's him out the front, painting the shutters. Now he did a lot of the plastering work, and the work in the basement, which I'm now, like, ripping out. Um, so he did a lot of that, so that's him painting the shutters. Um, now the ones where you see it burnt down, that's literally like the day it burnt down. Well, it's like a day or so after, there's still smoke coming out of the top. You can see like there was a lot more left in the chateau than there is now. Um, the red truck out the front is the fire brigade's truck. Okay, the interior and look. This is gonna come, well, it's gonna be a bit disappointing 
to what you may think. So obviously, when the owners took over it, they wanted to modernise it, and modern at the time was 1970s, 1980s brown. So here's a picture of a fireplace which was actually in the basement where the original kitchen was. If you look closely at the corner of the fireplace, you can see that they've used one of the banister corners from out the front, which, yeah, that's, that's a bit annoying. Obviously, you've all seen the one of the staircase, which just looks, is so ornate. You can just see in the corner there, a little bike underneath the staircase. Um, very, very strange. I suspect that, that isn't the original layout of the staircase because it hits the corner of the pillar which seems really weirdly designed and I don't know but cool anyway so this is a picture of the kitchen which they moved to upstairs and well yeah not not great they had a, like a bar in it um yeah just very very day very unchateau very dated and there's loads more like other pictures to show you. I, I just took pictures of the ones that he was showing me, but he's gonna photocopy them all. There's some better interiors. There's one with the owner sat there and there's big gilded mirrors on the wall um, in one of the rooms. And then he's got the after photo of it burnt down and the gilded mirrors all blackened. So they'd be really, really cool to get out. But yeah, so you know what? It is disappointing to see the interior like that. Um, but it takes like a bit of the pressure off because there's this massive burden on me coming into the entranceway, seeing all these grand like details and thinking, wow, it must've been so luxurious. And then maybe at one time it was, but now looking at that, I think, yeah, we can make this place better than it was. I can definitely improve on that anyway. Yeah, there you go. You've seen them now. So before I get that stuff up here, I wanted to take the opportunity while the scaffolding is downstairs to try and remove the dreaded suspended toilet situation. I don't think I'll quite get rid of that one. It's a bit too high at the moment, but definitely all this I can get rid of. I can get rid of all the wood and then maybe actually that's another floor we can put back in. And that one is actually inside which is quite a treat i mean in a way i kind of don't want to get rid of it it's become quite iconic to the chateau b-roll but you know toilet on a head is not a great situation so it needs to be done and that's what i think i'm going to do next something i can do while i'm waiting for these other beams for this floor they're going to be like another three or four days so that's a job i can get ticked off the list and I know I've just been messing about today, clearing up. So I hope you've enjoyed kind of a bit of the history about the chateau and seeing the pictures. And I just, I just like you lot to be involved. Obviously, all this is on the Patreon account and more as well. There's loads more research I found out, which I just haven't got round to making a proper vlog out of. So if you want to find more, check that out in the link below. And if not, I will see you lovely people tomorrow. <laughs>